Uh, good evening, everyone, and uh, welcome to the Trumbull Veterans and First Responders meeting of August 27, 2020. Uh, I'd like to begin with a Pledge of Allegiance. Uh, we can begin a Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Um, at this time, Marissa, would you call the roll call of the committee? Sure. Um, Bruce Silverstone. Here. Kevin Bova. Yes. Ray Baldwin. Yes. Jim Nugent. Yes. Steve Lemoyne. Here. Uh, Mr. Seiko. Here. Chief Lombardo. Here. And um, I'm not sure if Ernie is a member of the committee or not. Who? No. Ernie Foito. No, no, and, no, no, no. And Roy Mulgard, they're yeah, guests. You've named, yeah, you've named yeah. all the uh, committee members. Okay. Great. And great. George Wiles, an associate, is, is on as well. All right, so we have uh, five members. We have a quorum. We're good. Okay, excellent. Uh, at this time, I'd like to, uh, next, the item on the agenda is public comment. Is there anybody from the public that would like to be heard at this time? Is there anybody indicated, Bill? Uh, there's not. If anybody wants to speak at the bottom of your screen, you may hit the raise hand button, or if you're on the phone, uh, star nine. Okay, not not seeing anybody that's uh, indicated the desire to, to public comment. I'll close the public comment. Um, I have a motion on the floor to approve the uh, minutes of our July 28th meeting. Do we have a motion? I make a motion. Dan Sacco, make a motion. Seconded. Bruce, uh, any discussion on the motion? Hearing none discussion, we'll go to a vote. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Okay, any opposed? Okay, motion passed. The, uh, the first item on the agenda is uh, the discussion and the possible vote this evening on the scope and plan for the, uh, for the building. And we have George Wiles and Associates. Um, just, as a, a, just as an update to uh, everybody on the committee, um, over the last couple of weeks, uh, Dan Sacco and I have had an opportunity to meet with uh, Dimitri Paris from the, uh, the park superintendent and uh, to discuss his, uh, his concerns and desires for the building and the site. We also met with the two commanders, uh, Ernie, Roy, uh, Ernie Foido from the American Legion and, and Roy Mulgard from the VFW to uh, hear uh, what kind of uh, you know, things that they would like to see incorporated into the building. Uh, we also spoke to the police chief regarding his uh, uh, requirements for the building, uh, which we'll go into in, in more detail with George Wiles. And lastly, we had an opportunity to speak with the uh, Public Works Director, George Estrada, to get some kind of a feeling as to uh, what involvement the, uh, the Public Works Department might be able to give us during the course of the construction. We'll be able to report on that to you. So, um, George, I'm, I'm going to kind of turn it over to you at this time and let you take the lead. Okay. Um, uh, thank you very much. Uh, for, for allowing us to uh, design this. I want to thank everybody. We, I don't think we've met since, uh, since the selection. So I want to uh, thank everybody for your support. Um, in addition to that, uh, with this evening is uh, Anna Depaz from our office. Um, and just briefly, just to uh, give you a report what, we, what we've done since uh, the selection. As Ray said, we've met with the end users, uh, the police department, uh, and uh, had some uh, discussions. The chief was uh, was involved in that conversation, and we sort of were talking about uh, some of the, um, the the review comments uh, of the of the plans. Uh, in addition to that, we have uh, 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 our contract uh, with the town and. Met with uh, Ray and uh, Jim. They've had some comments. We made the corrections to the uh, to that contract and uh, sent it on 
uh, as recently as the, a couple hours ago this afternoon. Um, and then the next thing that we've uh, been doing is we've uh, solicited uh, uh, a request for uh, uh, surveys from um, three surveyors. Uh, and we've got two back. We're waiting for uh, we're waiting for a, a third to come back, and we'll uh, present those uh, to the to the building committee uh, after we had a chance to uh, make sure that um, everything is that we want is in there. Um, we've asked the, uh, the proposals from the surveyors to do the uh, the property line survey, the uh, meets and bounds, the topographical survey. And also to uh, map map the wetlands, and we've asked them to do that for the entire site. Uh, and I think that'll be a uh, even though we're only working uh, in the parking lot and over near the building, I think it'll be a benefit to the town uh, to have that information that we'll share with the public works department and whatever other uh, department uh, can use that use that information. Uh, in addition to that, uh, the next thing that we've done is that we've uh, uh, gone into the plans and we've tried to accommodate uh, some of the review comments that we got. And essentially, um, if you recall, we started with a 4,600 square foot building uh, uh, early on when we were working pro bono. Uh, and we really hadn't met with anybody. We just took a, we took a stab at it. Uh, after we met with uh, a couple of, well, I think we met, met with Roy, Ernie maybe, uh, uh, the chief, uh, some things got added a little bit. Uh, we met with uh, um, uh, Dimitri uh, and the building uh, went up to about 5,000 square feet. And now recently we've met again and uh, the building currently is around 5,300 square feet. Um, and what's happened? I, I, excuse me. I, I, have, a, I have a question, George. And this is for uh, the chairman. Ray, when do the rest of us who have not met with George get to meet with him? No, this is the purpose of this meeting. We had some preliminary uh, discussions with the end users. Now it's the committee's turn to weigh in on the uh, on the design and what you want to see in the building. That's what this. That's what we're doing here this evening. That's the purpose. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Just going to give you an overview. And then um, hopefully, Bill, somebody can uh, uh, let us uh, share the screen, take over the screen, and then we'll we'll uh, um, go through those three plans, the three uh, renditions, and then everyone's welcome to comment on it. But you know, let me let me stop for just a second, George. To, to your point, uh, Bruce, uh, this is a working session. And, and we may or may not want to go come to a vote tonight at all. There may be some open items that we want to look into further, but we had a, we have to do have a starting point. And so this evening is a starting point for the committee. Uh, you know, ideally it would be best if we could all meet face to face and look at the hard design and, and make comments on that. And maybe we can, we'll have that opportunity, but we have to be sensitive to FOI. And um, so we'd have to notice it and have it in a public venue. There's a lot involved. It's a difficult process doing this the way we have to do it by Zoom. But, and this, this may, you know, this discussion may carry on into another meeting. So by no means is this a, a, a final uh, discussion this evening. Got it. Yeah, we're, we're uh, I think we're a, a few steps away from really a, a final design. So let me, uh, to, to Bruce's questions to segue into, hopefully we can uh, take over the screen, can we? Can we share our screen? Let's see what happens. Okay. Can you all see what, uh, the floor plan? All right, yes, yes. okay. Oh, you can, great. Yep. Okay, that's good. Okay, so this was the first, the first scheme that we did pro bono. Uh, and essentially it's uh, seating for about 120 people, uh, a couple of resource rooms and the, the bathrooms and the lobby, the kitchen on the uh, left-hand side. One of the comments that uh, Dimitri asked was why, why are the mechanical and the kitchen uh, on the left-hand side of the building, why, why not put it over on the other side? And the answer to that was that the, all the utilities are, are, are located on 
that end. Um, and it's just more economical to bring the services for the water, gas, and um, uh, electric close to the mechanical room. So that's the reason that is. So this is uh, 40, 4,600 uh, 4, square feet. Uh, the, next, uh, the next plan is uh, we met, uh, man, I forget who it was with Ray, but I, I, think, I think Roy was involved in that and, and I think Ernie. Uh, and they brought up some good comments. They brought up uh, there was no storage. Um, there was uh, no place to hang coats uh, as we enter. Um, there was uh, some other some other items. There, there was uh, no office, um, and uh, there wasn't a need for uh, three classrooms. It was basically one classroom that would be multi-use. And this square footage. Uh, came up to 5,000 5, square feet. The next one, and that never was presented to the, to the building committee except for tonight, because at that time we're still working pro bono. Now we've, we've been selected, uh, and this is, uh, this is where we are right now, which is 5,300 square feet. And in this rendition, we've got uh, the stairway going to the basement, uh, we have a basement now, undetermined as to um, where that ba how how far that basement is going to go, and whether it's on the left hand side or the right hand side of the building. That will be determined by the geotechnical report once we engage the engineers when uh, the building committee approves. Says you know what this plan is something we want to go with. Um, we have we've added a family uh, toilet up near the vestibule. Uh, number 16, which uh, is, we call it a family room, but it's a family bathroom, um, which allows for uh, unisex. If you're there with your daughter, if you're a man, you're there with your daughter, you can take her to the bathroom. If you're a woman there with your son, etc. cetera. Uh, in addition, that would made it a little bit larger so that it can also uh, act as a bride's room uh, in support of the gathering room. Um, and, and in this scenario, we've got three classrooms that are about 450, 425, 450 square feet. This pushes the building up to uh, 5,300. How many, how many people will those rooms hold, George? Uh, this, this is 125 in the gathering room and with um, the movable doors into classroom number two, we get it up to about uh, 125. We get it up to about 140. And each of those classrooms would hold about how many? Uh, each each classroom uh, can hold approximately uh, about 20 people. So I guess so. Uh, the the uh, with the two uh, rooms that are next to each other. So they would hold, is that a, that's a, a movable wall between them? Yes. So that would, that, that would hold 40. 40. So uh, chief, is that a good number for you? For training? Yeah, that's fine. I'd, I mean, much bigger than that. Um, you kind of lose perspective from uh, some of your people who are participating. So, and it looks like the other room, I can't see it that clearly, looks larger than the two that uh, George was pointing to. The one with 488 square feet. Right. It looks a little bigger than the, than the one, classroom one and two. It is yeah. big. Yeah. yeah, what, I, what I, I did in this rendition, um, as I listened to you and some other people, I felt as though uh, these rooms could hold 15 to 20 people uh, for various seminars. And in this instance, you could have three seminars. And I think Ray, uh, Ray Baldwin in an early uh, comment uh, wanted an entrance so that you could use these three classrooms, enter and exit without having to go through the main gathering room. Okay. Hey, George, does classroom one and two, is that a divider? Can they open up to one classroom? Yes, it can open up to one classroom. So, uh, uh, the, and one of the other comments was, uh, take the bar out of, I mean the beverage area, take that out of the gathering room uh, and push it over onto the side. And so that's what we did. 
In addition to that, somewhere along the line, um, we did this with uh, uh, Fairfield University when we did a building over there uh, that they, when they had fun ra uh, fundraisers, they wanted a, a way to get from the beverage area out onto the deck without having to go through the gathering room. So we introduced some exterior doors there so that uh, they, you, if you want a, a drink or a, or a beverage, you don't have to go through the gathering room. So in this instance, you could, you could close off the building and it'd be multi, multi, multifunctional as uh, how you use it. You'd have something going out on the deck, uh, close off the gathering room. You know, there's a, a million scenarios that you can have. In addition to that, we added a storage room uh, number five, uh, and that storage room would take into consideration uh, chair storage, uh, table storage, uh, in support of the gathering room. Uh, and that was another good comment. Um, uh, so even though on this level, we've only got 144 square feet of storage, we do have a stairwell going down to the basement and, and that's just there as a bookmarker right now. And where, where it ends up, as I said before, will depend upon the geometric. But George, would you, would you show the, uh, the commanders also have a, uh, an office. Where is that located? Number nine, right there uh, is uh, the commander's office that will support uh, two desks. It's not luxurious, but it's got uh, two workstations at 100 square feet each. Uh, you know, I mean, they, um, so that, that works out pretty good. So this total design is 5,300 square feet? 5,300 square feet. So yeah. the, our, challenge, our challenge is going to be, um, as we added square footage here, three, oh, over, well over 300 square feet, is um, that drives the cost. And not only the cost, but it also adds uh, the requirement for more parking spaces. So do you have an idea how much more it's gonna cost for this additional space? Not at this time. No, okay. Do you, I, I, can say, I can say this statement, that we, we can't continue, this is kind of a negative, I shouldn't say it negatively, but I don't know how to say it. We can't continue to have scope creep like this and not adjust the budget. So right now the budget that was cast by by Bismarck uh, pro bono uh, is at uh, 2.8 million. So with this addition uh, of 300 square feet, we've blown through the $3 million mark. And so we're probably in the low three millions. The exact number, I, I don't know. But um, I know that, uh, you know, the, the, the public relations of this that was presented was about a $3 million project. And now with this 5,300, we're just going over it. So uh, I want to make the building committee aware of that because now is the time that uh, you can save money. Um, and right now we're, we, we really need to be very uh, conscientious about the size of the building. Well, listen, George and, uh, and Ray, I think that's a point of discussion that we might want to have about do we want to drive up the budget? Do we think we can raise those funds? Because if it, it becomes a question, we can raise the funds or lose the building, then we should look at making some kind of adjustment into what we're putting forward well, here. Well, a, a little bit later on, Rena is going to do a presentation on where we are with the steep grant. Okay. We got some. We got some. Um, we got some news about the steep grant um, from the, the state as it's presently constituted. Um, it's not nearly as much money per project as we had hoped it would be. Um, so the cost of this project is gonna be a, a sensitive uh, issue. So yeah, we can begin to discuss how many classrooms you really need and how much. Yeah, exactly, exactly. And then, and the other question, so can we just make a comment before you guys go any farther, please? Yeah, go ahead. So just so we're aware for transparency reasons and for going further, if this goes to the next step is, George Wiles, Wiles Architect, uses Bismarck as a cost estimator for their projects. That's an outsource they use. So when this does go to construction, uh, they will not be able to bid on the uh, project. 
George is using them as a cost estimate and is bringing that information to you guys. That's an outsource of a vendor he uses, which is fine. They're great. Uh, they're good out. They're pretty accurate. So the numbers he gives you are correct, just for transparency reasons. So people know that, uh, that that's what he uses for his estimating. Right, George? Am I, am I mistaken there? Or am I saying anything wrong? Uh, yes and no. I, I agree with you that uh, if for this uh, moving forward, if we use uh, a contractor that's just going to bid on it, that's an obvious conflict. But uh, I believe that uh, Bismarck did this on a pro bono basis before this project was early in its conceptual area. So I don't know if that makes a difference. I hate to preclude uh, a local a Trumbull residence from bidding on the project. Well, Kevin, we can have that discussion. I'm uh, just speaking of transparency. That's all I'm doing, Ray, because he's going to keep using them as an estimate. We're not like done with them yet. They're going to, you have to go, if it was 5,300, 5,000, you still have to use them, right? That, that's what I'm trying to clarify. Well, let's, let's, well, we can have that. We'll have this, that discussion with sure. George. Okay. Hey, Ray, hey, Ray Dan, Dan Sacco, one more question. George, didn't we talk about the need for two offices, one for the people who manage the building? Two offices? Yeah, I'm going to bring that up. I thought, I thought we said we needed two offices. Yeah. One, one right. for the commanders and one for the people who would manage the building. Right. Okay. Yeah, but, uh, what I heard was uh, one office with two people. But if it's two offices, one for each person? No, no. No, no. 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 Two, it's one office for the two commanders. And then one office for whoever was going to manage the uh, building. True. You, they have to have two separate offices. Right. And then um, while we're talking about that, and I, maybe I miss it, but George, is there um, on this floor, is there a supply room area for custodial equipment and such? Uh, yes. Do you see the woman's room? What number? That's the janitor's closet right there. Okay, that's enough room. I, I don't know. I can't tell how big it is, but okay. <laughs> and uh, some shelves to, for toilet paper and um, whatever. Um, I, I don't know whether we'll use uh, air hand dryers with the COVID. We'll, put, we'll have to get into that a little bit. Yeah. There's also a storage room next to the classroom number three. Yeah. yeah. Yep. Which could also that could also be used as, as storage or janitorial space. Mm -hmm. can, the, can the person who's going to manage the facility Share an share an office uh, because that person is not going to be there full time. They'll be there on a part time basis, and to have space allocated um, for someone who's not going to be there. I mean, space is at a premium now as we look at this. Um, is that so? Is it would that be can that be a shareable space? I mean, um, or carve something out of the office that's already there. I know that's a small space already, but to but to create another office that size, when we are, um, I think, uh, you know. So let me just push that. Let me table that for a second. Well, um, George, how many people to a, let's say a wedding? How many people could be seated uh, between the gathering room and I guess the two classrooms? The two classrooms, uh, you would end up with 160. So Ray, the, some of the functions at Tashua run to 175 and 200, right? Yeah, but again, I, I don't think we, again, that, that's the, a philosophical discussion with the group as to whether we want to compete with a, uh, with Tashua Knowles or, you know, we're, I, we always kind of envisioned it would be a somewhat smaller venue um, that uh, the 125 to 150 range was, you know, something we were, you know, kind of striving for, unless I was wrong. Um, you know, we, we don't want to get to the point where some, we finish this and somebody said, well, why didn't you add, you know, uh, enough space for another 25 or 50 people? Well, the, the, again, one of the drivers uh, for this, the size of this building has and remains where we're going to park everybody and that still is a big that's still a challenge for us exactly so that that is you know even more so than the added cost 
it's where we're going to put people uh, in terms of, of, of parking them on that site. And uh, like I said, this meeting tonight is just one meeting. We're not voting on any finality here at all. So, yeah. So, so the question, all right. So my question is, is the limiter parking? Is that the limiter? Well, there's two limiters. There's parking and there's budget. And space. <laughs> well, well, one drives the other. So clearly if we can add, if we can add more space to the building and, and we have adequate parking, then it's a matter of do we have are we have the capability to raise the money to to make the difference up? So there's there's three factors. Yeah. Yeah. George, I, I, Greg, I'd like to add a fourth one to that, which is whether the town can and should be in the business of subsidizing something that's going to compete yeah. with a local business in town. I'm not so sure that the town would be in favor of doing that. It's not really fair, in my opinion, and. Uh, Pretty hard to draw the line when your town starts doing that. Uh, town's already put up two hundred thousand in seed money and potentially with no no commitments at this point for further funding. But uh, you have to bear that in mind. We're not in the business of competing with uh, the town. Is not in the business of competing with local businessmen who put their own money on the line. So keep keep that in mind too. Well, if I can just jump in for a moment, the um, the plans that I saw were three classrooms. And I don't know what the other, maybe EMS told you, but I don't need three different classrooms because I'm not going to have three different training sessions going on at one time up there. So I'm not, I can't speak to the other emergency services, but um, if we're looking for office space, I don't need both. I don't need all three classrooms is what I'm saying. Um, well, I, you know, it's, it's, you know, I'm, I'm glad you brought that up because if we were to eliminate one of the classrooms, we could make a two classrooms, one a, a little bit smaller and put an office in there. I think two classrooms and, you know, some of your training sessions may very well be able to be done in the, the gathering room. Uh, you know, you may have a, a, a group to come in for training and you're going to want to use the, 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 the gathering room during the day. So yeah. eliminating one of the classrooms is, is, would be helpful to us because I think what Dimitri's point was the, uh, the idea of having adequate storage on site was, was, was very key. And by, by doing that with a basement really helps us out a lot um, in terms of the, the cost per square foot. So I don't know what everybody else thinks, but that, that's, yeah. Uh, I, I would not, I, again, I would not be opposed to eliminating one of the classrooms. Yeah, I'm, I'm in full agreement with that, right? Well, we understand from my perspective, at least, most of my training is going to, I would say, just about all of it is going to be weekdays. The gathering room, and, and I could be incorrect about this, um, when we're talking about having large groups of over 100 people, it's probably not going to be a Monday through Friday. If someone's having an event, it's going to be a Saturday or Friday night or Sunday, something like that. Um, so to have three classrooms, I'm not, I don't want to say it's a waste, but I think it'd be more effective if I had one larger classroom, even bigger than classroom three, and then we could do whatever with office space and storage with classroom one and two. And I don't even know if we would conflict with like when EMS does their training. I, I just, you know, EM, EMS, for, for those of you who, uh, may not know, EMS has pretty much uh, said that they're going after their own building, which would include a training facility. They have not been uh, participants in any discussions with respect to this building by choice, not because we didn't invite them, but by choice, because they're, they are looking to, to do their own building. Um, Steve, Steve Lemoyne, I haven't heard from you at all. Do you have any comments about what we're, what's going on here? Steve? Yeah, I had to unmute myself, sorry. Oh, okay. Um, yeah, I mean, the chief brings up a really good point. Uh, there's a lot of classroom space there, and if he doesn't need that, um, that's that's certainly a, a savings in, in size and, um, and creates more office space. Uh, my question is, with the basement, are we sure we can do a basement on that site? Well, it's not going to be a full basement, Steve. Okay. The idea was that they're going to have to excavate material 
uh, from underneath that building and, and, re and otherwise replace it. And the comment was made by Dimitri Paris that why replace it with material when you can uh, use it for basement storage space? Okay, I didn't know if there would be a water problem because it's next to the pond, but. No, well, we, we could, there, there certainly have the capability of mitigating that, but we are not, look, we are not at this time looking at a full basement for the whole foundation. Okay. Ray, would you mind if I ask a question about the, the plan here? Can Who's this? This is Rena. Oh yes, Rena, go ahead. Um, is that a retractable wall between classroom one and classroom two? Yes. So that would make one big classroom chief if you, if you wanted to use both, or it could be two separate ones, depending. Is there a retractable wall between gathering room one and class, and classroom two? Yeah, yeah I think you said yes. So that's really great too, because if you're having large functions, you can still set up against the farthest wall and expand into there. That gives you so much flexibility classroom wise that it is very wise to consider, I think classroom three potentially as something else. I think that the utility of classroom one and two lends itself to some benefits to the gathering room also, that whole area. So I wouldn't knock those classrooms out. I would look at cannibalizing classroom three if you're gonna do it. That's just my comment. Yeah, but, but the question, George, was space was because the layout was too long, right? So just merging classroom one and two still creates a space problem, right? Over what we have now, over the foundation? Uh, no. It doesn't? Okay, then that's the answer. What, what, what I'm concerned about is that we're going from 4,600 to 5,300, and I think the chief's suggestion or the idea that the community is, is kind of busting around is let's look at eliminating or re, repurposing uh, classroom number three and maybe yes. drops down enough square footage that gets us back down to like yes. 5,600. Yep. Okay. Well, I, think, I think we're all in agreement with that. Yeah. Hey, uh, so, one more. Hey, one more question, please. The lobby. Yep. The lobby is that the memorial wall area? Yes. Okay. 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 That's it. Thank you. Are there other uh, any other comments right now? I know it's a lot to digest, and you want to take a look at this. I'm not. I'm not even going to suggest that we. Uh, uh, we take a vote tonight because we have two members that are missing. I'd like to hear what they have to say as well. But does everybody, uh, is everybody kind of in agreement that we can um, shrink classroom three at least to get it down to the uh, 5,000 square feet? I agree. Well, I think you're uh, going to. I, 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 I would ask, well, I would ask which the incremental cost before we start shrinking things. I mean, it's. You know, it might not be that. I mean, is it a hundred thousand or is it three hundred thousand? You know, I mean, it's you know, it, it, what, what happens is, with something like this gets built, and then somebody, you know, people start saying, "Well, why didn't we add a little more space to it?" Yeah. I mean, to take it down is easy, but I mean, we should know that we should have some cost parameters and understand what that is, rather than just just cut. I mean, it's pretty functional at this point. Well, Bruce, I, I. I think we're jumping ahead a little bit, and I agree with what you're saying. We should know what the incremental cost is. But what I'm hearing tonight is there's a consensus to take a look at re repurposing classroom number three, and we'll crank up another yeah. design quickly so at the next building committee meeting, you can take a look at it, and maybe from th at that point, we might be able to have a discussion on, on costs once we tear into the uh, the estimate on a preliminary basis. If we do it on a square foot basis, at least it'll be something. So, so here's a question. So, if that classroom three became two offices, that is the corner office that, that is now number nine moves there, moves over there as half of that space, and then there's another office to, for someone who manages the space. Is there another functional purpose for that corner corner spot? Because that's that's pretty prime. That's pretty a pretty prime location there. Yeah, I I I suggest leaving that office because it's a it, because it's a good control 
as to who's entering the building. And then we can get another office at the uh, near the other entrance uh, so that we have two control points on how the building gets used. So uh, I don't think that the two offices are interdependent. And if they were physically separated, I don't think that would be a disadvantage. But, you know, I, I, I agree. I agree with you wholeheartedly. I, I think the office number nine by the vestibule, that should be the office for whoever's managing the building. I think the, the two commanders should have their office somewhere in the area of classroom three, which is closer to the meeting room. So they have some privacy. Yeah, we can, we, we can, we can, uh, we can, uh, you know, develop another, uh, another scheme. And maybe by then we'll have some conversation with the, with uh, our structural engineer and um, be able to answer uh, uh, a little more definitively, uh, Steve, on, on where's the basement and the feasibility of it. Where will garbage go? What's that? Where will garbage for the site go? Uh, you see over, um, don't go back. So right where it says square number 14, to the left of that is a dumpster enclosure. So we, we want to have the dumpster as close as we can to the to the uh, warm up kitchen because that tends to be messy. And so, so how expensive? I mean, it'd be nice to have the dumpsters on the other side, right? So, and I agree with the you know having it near the kitchen. So is the is the hold up, is the hold back simply the cost of moving the utilities, George? Yeah, that's that's pretty. You know, you know, we, we might end up with the dumpster maybe across the drive. I, I put it there because, uh, you know, I think I can screen it really well because it is at the entrance road. I think we can screen it and make it disappear. Uh, but in terms of function, I just know I've done a lot of these uh, commercial kitchens. And, you know, the folks that do this, God bless them. I mean, they come in and they're working hard. And at the end of that, event they want to get out of here and if that dumpster isn't close a, a lot of times well, you... I, I get it but i mean again i would ask you know what's the cost of moving the utilities i mean i know we can get a deal on water so so i can almost take that you know partially out of the equation and you know because of what it is that we're doing i mean it's just it's kind of a public service building i'll bet other utilities um can they can't give a great they can't give a deal publicly but they could certainly help us i mean is it worth trying to ask them to move the utilities and then we get to move the kitchen to the other side along with the dumpster yeah uh, i'll be honest with you my experience with utility uh, utility companies uh giving anything has been poor that's not to say that it won't happen here but um if you're going to move the, the utilities to the other side of the building, which is about 100, 125 feet away from where we are now, um, you know, electric, gas, um, water, water, uh, that's, that's, that, the, that, that means too that your, your, your fire pit and your whole design has to be flip flopped over. Yeah, that, that would be, even if you just you know, took a shot in the dark and said it's 25,000 for each utility, you got three of them, that's 75,000. So 75,000 to $100,000 to, to put it over there, I, I think um, that's not money well spent. Because everything is right there. The, tele the telephone pole, the, hyd the hydrant, and the gas service, it's all right there for us. Use. I mean, it can't be hard to get. I mean, they, they charge by the linear foot generally, so it can't be hard to get an estimate on what that would cost. No, no, it can't. But I can tell you, it's going to be significant. Um, yeah, we can put a number on that. But you, you, you know, again, we're talking costs. Now, there's other things that came up in the course of our conversation that are not included in that we have not included as yet, and that. Includes uh, acoustic uh, in acoustic engineer, 
uh, a sound system, security, and other uh, technology. We're going to have to involve in the design of this pretty early on. Um, I, I think we, we all agree that we've been in enough venues where where there's a poor acoustic uh, uh, room, poor acoustically designed room, and there's a bad sound system. Uh, you've wasted all your time and effort in building a nice facility. So that's that's going to be an, another cost to us as well. Hey George, whilst is this a green building? Is there stuff to keep costs down that way with the lights, the windows, solar, or anything like that been looked at? The green, going so, green? So the, the, uh, the Connecticut uh, uh, building code, current building code, uh, they, they've upped the, uh, the, the energy requirements of all the buildings in the systems. So when we're done with this building, this building will be in the range of a lead silver building. Okay. So um, all the uh, all the all the glass will be high performance glass. The exterior building envelope uh, will have a high R value for the roof. Um, all the exterior doors will be insulated. Um, so. Do they give money sometimes for that? Is there a sentence for that? Is there any monies they give towards that? Not that I'm aware of. Now, that's a good point, Kevin. That the uh, we will be contacting the uh, Eversource uh, and try to get in on their uh, uh, rebate program. And the rebate money is significant. It's, it's, you know, it's in the six, five to six figure area. Matter of fact, up at, uh, up at Stern Village, that, that um, the windows alone, arena, I think that the, the, the rebate back on the windows was almost, Fifty thousand dollars, and that was a five hundred thousand dollars project. The rebate on the mini splits was that project was uh, about a million, and the rebate was close to a hundred grand. So there's significant money out there. Yep. And you do have to get you, you got to upgrade the the, uh, the HVAC system and the lighting, but th that cost is uh, com compared to the rebate back. It's it's, it's no greater. Yeah. George, if I can ask a question, was this building originally the design thought to be just on a slab and no basement? Originally, I thought it would be on a slab and we would uh, excavate out and bring uh, earth back in. Um, but because of the lack of storage, I think it's worth us uh, taking a look at that uh, and evaluating and putting a number on on what that is, and that's as soon as as soon as the the uh, floor plan quiets down, we'll engage uh, our structural engineer, and he'll respond to a basement based upon the geotech report. Yeah, the reason why I bring that up is, regardless, if it would be on a slab, even if we left it at the same um, size, five thousand, uh, you know, put in a basement, and we sh everybody's got to keep in mind that really increases your cost when you're talking about foundations needing to be poured and so forth. It's it, staircases. It's it really pushes our cost up. Yeah, and and to your to your to your point, chief, we we stay we want to stay away from the, the gather uh, uh, basements under the gathering room. Those yeah. are heavy loads. You know. Uh, we're going to look for opportunities to put the basement under the kitchen, under the beverage area, under the lobby, or at the whole other end under the classrooms. Um, yeah, well, it, exactly, because it's 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 a good location for storage. And, and I'm not opposed to a, a basement whatsoever. I think it's a great idea. It allows us to store things. I just was thinking about the numbers. That's all. Yeah, and we, we'll evaluate evaluate that. And here's the cost comparison. Uh, yeah. Geotech right now says we got to go down about eight feet take out the deleterious material, um, which is the new word for the day. And take out the deleterious material, bring in uh, structural fill, bring it up in layers, compact it, and then put a normal spread footing on top of that structural fill. That cost compared to taking out the eight foot of uh, deleterious material and then building foundation walls um, and putting a floor assembly on, that's the, evaluation and I think it's a wash. But and again, we're not we're not talking about a full basement. Oh. Right, right. 
We're, we're talking uh, uh, probably a basement, maybe a third quarter, uh, maybe a third or quarter size of the uh, of the base. So just right. enough to get enough storage. So uh, we can put you know tables. The VFW American Legion have a lot of stuff to store on site. What they're using a a convex box for now. Uh, if we can accommodate that, uh, the, the, the kind of stuff they need to store long term. And Chief, you may even have some equipment, uh, scuba tanks and the like you want to store uh, on, on site. We, yeah. can do, we can do it in, in that, that basement space. Yep. That's fine. In the elevator. An elevator? You don't want to pay for that. No, we're not. We have one at town hall for you, Bruce. Yeah, we're not, we're not we're doing, doing it. Elevator. It's, 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 we have one trying to get rid of. Go All right, so, so, uh, George, next step was to take the comments from the committee. Uh, our next meeting, have you come back, see, do a little rework, maybe get some of the numbers, somebody, some of the folks were talking about, and then we can take another shot at this. Oh. Does anybody have any more comments they'd like to make regarding the, the scope and plan? Ray Ernie, uh, is it possible for me to say something? Who's this? Ernie. Ernie oh, yeah, go ahead, Ernie. Go ahead. All right. Sorry I wasn't able to make the last meeting, but um, looking at what we have here, the office number nine would be an ideal place for whoever's managing because anybody who would come into the, the front doors would go right to their office. We agree. I was envisioning right. I was envisioning something for the commanders that would be, be big enough. I mean, it doesn't have to be a real big room. Roy and I are going to share the same room, but big enough to put some type of a small conference table, like maybe sit six people in case we have an executive session or do some planning where we wouldn't have to go out in the main gathering room. We could have our own little meeting at that table. That's what I was looking at. Yeah, we. Th I think we. We, you may have heard earlier, we suggested doing exactly that. In other words, office number nine would be for whoever's managing the building. And right. then uh, classroom number three, we would put in an, a office for you and, uh, and Roy, so that uh, with a conference table uh, that you could share and you could have your executive sessions there. Yeah, that's a good idea. Yeah, it wouldn't have to be as big as that whole classroom, obviously. No, but, uh, no something a little bit bigger than uh, 128 square feet. Gotcha, we understand. Yep. All right, good, thank you. All right, if there's nobody else, uh, we'll just put this discussion on hold until the uh, our, next, uh, our next meeting and next go around, okay? All right, the next item, item on the agenda is discussion of the steep grant application. And I know that Rena's on with us now, Rena. Rena? Yeah, sorry, I was trying okay. to unmute. Um, right. Thanks, Ray, and thanks to the committee. As Ray mentioned earlier, we had like a, a I'll, I'll use your term, Ray, a little kick in the teeth. We were working with our state legislative delegation and a team um, of some of you folks uh, to do some strategy around the steep grant. In the past, steep grants were capped at $500,000 a project. In the first set of guidelines that was issued, there was no cap listed for the grant, but they issued a second set of guidelines and there was one line in there that said, grants each community, and, and hold on to your seat for this, but each community can only apply for a maximum of $128,205. So I don't know how they got that number, but it's some kind of math that they're doing with how many communities are out there and how many projects they want to support. So these are economic development capital projects. So they're brick and mortar or related to brick and mortar construction only. And it has to be shovel ready and all the, you know, all these other criteria. So I don't know how they're going to get for, they have a $15 million pool of funding and they have $128,205 of community. So do the math, it's, it's, it's crazy. But anyway, when we found that out, we were sort of uh, dealt a little setback because we had anticipated applying for up to a million dollars. Uh, 
what we're going to do now, what we did, I actually filed the grant today. And what we did was we created a phase one project. We, we wrote about the entire project, as you all know it. But then we broke off phase one and we said design, demolition, and site preparation would be phase one of the bigger project. So we were able to make a case that that was shovel ready, could be completed within the grant period, and was doable with the amount of money because we have the design money from the town, the 200,000, and then the $128,205, George, Ray, and myself went through the budget today and we looked at a portion of the earthwork and the demolition costs, which would be covered. The good thing about that is it will put us in a good place um, for the next phase, which is bidding the full construction. So it'll get the site ready. Um, and it allows us an opportunity to still take advantage of the smaller pot of state money. Now, that doesn't mean we're giving up on larger state money. We're going to be talking with our delegation again about the possibility um, of a state bond request. We have already been talking with them about that. And my guess is they will not be able to allocate the whole $15 million of steep money through this process that the state's created because it's so bogus, candidly. Um, so there may be some leftover steep money. So we're gonna continue down that road for more state money at the same time, we, we took what we, we, you know, we applied for what is available to us, and I explained the scope that we applied for. If there's any questions, I'd be happy to answer them. So, you know, we, uh, we were trying to make lemonades out of lemon once I, we heard this news. Right. It wasn't very good. But I think Rain has got a good plan here in terms of applying for the 128-205 that combined with the 200,000 that we got uh, from the town council uh, gets us right up to the point where we have done all our, our due diligence and we're ready to go to bid. That's not gonna be until probably January or so. Um, so hopefully by January, and I'm hopeful by January, uh, things will have changed uh, health-wise. Uh, you know, we've they found a vaccine. I know that Mary Beth wanted to be on this call to, Kind of give you uh, a, a somewhat of an update. They're, they're very hopeful at Yale that there will be a vaccine available by the end of the year, which means wow. that'll free up a lot of activity. Um, uh, it, it's listen, it, we uh, we are in a, a strange place now. So I don't want the project to stop. I want us to continue going through what we're doing now. I can't. We can't control what's going to happen in in January or February. But at least we can be positioned well should uh, should the uh, the climate change and we're able to uh, go out to bid on the project. Unless somebody has a, any crystal ball or some some information I don't. Uh, I listen. I welcome comment. Okay. <laughs> All right, we're going to keep plotting forward and see what we can do with the grant. We're going to keep working on the project. Uh, just to give you uh, some information on the timetable, uh, we're working on um, the town council by our building by building committee rules in the town of Trumbull has to approve the selection of architect. Um, the uh, LNA committee of the council will hear uh, our our request uh, for the. Uh, approval of, of George and his uh, and his team as our architect uh, on September 8th and then it will go before the full council on September 10th um, there's nothing really you need to do I just need to be aware of that uh, of the timetable there does, does anybody have any other comments or concerns or suggestions Ray, if I could uh, mention, this is Jim. Go ahead, Jim. Yeah, just uh, uh, we've been negotiating the contract, as Ray mentioned before. Uh, I did get a final draft from uh, George Wiles today, which I've approved. And 
we'll get that in final form and signed up. Uh, just to let everyone know, let Ray has mentioned this, but the architect services do not include an acoustical consultant, a technology consultant, or a security consultant. So those are three additional consultants that will have to be hired in addition to the architectural uh, fee for architectural services. And we talked a bit about this uh, today and you know, the technology uh, is very important. You want to have the building wired properly for all your internet, television, et cetera. Uh, this is the best time to run those wires and all the, uh, the data drop drops throughout the building where you want to locate them. And so there are additional experts, what I'm mentioning is that, that have to uh, you know, weigh in and have the input on that design of those things. Security, the building is in a, like, a bit of an isolated spot. Uh, Chief, I don't know if uh, there's something you want to weigh in about this on a later point, but in terms of cameras and motion lights and whatnot to keep that visible, I mean, would cameras be, be uh, visible at the police department? Is that that's something that could be done, you think? Yeah, they can be, sure. Yeah, and, and as Ray mentioned before, acoustics. So make sure, especially in that big room when you have a large gathering that the acoustics are proper so that everyone can hear what is being said on the presentation. So I'm just mentioning these are additional costs that you have to keep in mind to have a well-designed uh, well designed facility. Hey, Jim. Yeah. Uh, just so when we built other buildings and stuff, we have um, um, a single source, we'll say, that we use consistent throughout the town, which we can get a estimate for security from Omni Data which we use uh, at the police station now, we use at new buildings. Okay. I think we, get, we get a cost from them if it needs to be. Sure. Okay. Just, just to give everybody an idea, uh, uh, in a conversation with, with George Wiles today, uh, we asked about the approximate cost of an acoustic engineer and a sound system, and it's somewhere, somewhere in the area of $15,000. Um, town Council and the Board of Finance authorized us 200000 so we, we have some money available to do it. And as Jim pointed out, uh, as we're going through the design, this is the time to do the acoustical and the technology uh, incorporation and design in this building. So, uh, you know, it's not the, it has to, we don't have to do it tonight, uh, but keep in mind it has to be done pretty early on in the, in the uh, project. Uh, Ray, what we've done also at the police station with uh the architect that we hired for there didn't have all the services in house, like the two that you guys just mentioned. Uh, they were, and they had suggestions on who they should use. So if George had a, uh, a couple of vendors they like to bring in and give a, a scope of work, what it would cost. Uh, we, we would do that in addition and added uh, to George, his, um, his contract, and then we would pay the people direct. Uh, those two consultants. If it was for um, acoustics, or um, the IT stuff. So you know, George can uh, come up with if he knows a couple people. If not, uh, we can give him those suggestions, and they work. You know, it, you know Kevin. I, ironically, uh, I was noticed on the uh, the police building committee and and the acoustic engineer they're using. Yeah, that that was the same one that George recommended. Yeah, so Jim and myself are involved with that right now, too. So that's fine. Uh, but, you know, they can give you a, a, a scope and a little guidance on what you might need or what is needed for this kind of building. And then they can present it, George can present it back to us, the committee, uh, to feel more comfortable. Okay, fine. That's, that would that's stop fine. us. George, you all right doing that? Yeah, yeah, very good. Yep, yeah, we'll be more than happy to. Yep. All right. Okay. Uh, Folks, that's all I have for this evening. Anybody have anything to add? Uh, okay, uh, I'll need a motion to adjourn. Make a motion to adjourn, Dan Sacco. Okay, second? Second. Chief, second. Uh, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, thank you everyone. Have a good Thanks, evening. Thanks everybody, good night. Yeah.